Hey guys, in this video I gathered all the most frequent and common 3D beginner mistakes and I'm going to show you how to fix them. I found a lot of topics to talk about on my Discord server. People send me a lot of screenshots of their topology and I decided to make a video that will be a guide for everyone who struggle a lot with 3D modeling. You can also join my Patreon for exclusive content. So without further ado, let's get started. So this model is from my 3D modeling community challenge. Check out the video if you didn't, you can still enter this competition. And I thought it was a very good example to show. As you can see, the edge flow is very weird and wavy. The topology is not uniform and it has a lot of small and long polygons. I'm going to show you how to clean that. I'm going to select one face, Shift G, Coplanar, deselect the other faces. Let's duplicate and separate it as a new object. Press P to separate the selection. I'm using hard ops to delete all the edges and to keep only one single polygon. Press I to inset, then K to enable the knife tool and press A to cut a straight line. I'm going to select these two edges, right click, limit dissolve to keep the sharp corners. Select these four edges, Ctrl B to bevel, add one segment, P to adjust the shape to one, activate the snapping button set to vertex and activate the auto merge vertices button. Merge the vertices and get rid of these edges. Press Ctrl R to add a loop. Connect the vertices with J. Press K and A for the knife tool. Add more loop cuts to get a uniform subdivision. We have an end gone to turn into quads. To do that, add some loops on the right side and connect the vertices on each side of the triangular shape like so. Add one last cut to turn the triangles into diamond polygons. If you want an even space between the edges, select this loop, right click, loop tools, space. To make the corners sharper, select these vertices and slide them along the edges by pressing G twice. Repeat again on each corners. Select the border, extrude, scale, extrude again, add some loop cuts, select the sharp edges and add a bevel. And this is how you can get a better and uniform topology for your holes. The second common error that I often see is the wrong way to add subdivision to your models. Sometimes, when you want to add smaller details, you need more geometry to work with and you could be tempted to apply a subdivision surface modifier. But as you can see, if I zoom in and take a look at the corner, when I add a subdivision surface modifier, this corner becomes rounded. It's very destructive and this is not what you should do. There are two ways to add more geometry while keeping sharp corners. The first one is to select all the faces, right click and subdivide. But be careful, it works only on flat surfaces. As you can see the corner stays sharp. If you try to do that on a curved surface, this is what is going to happen. The right way to apply a subdivision surface modifier is to crease the sharp edges. Select the sharp edges, then press Shift E numpad 1, or you can adjust the crease value in the transform panel. The edges are going to turn purple. You can apply the modifier, and as you can see, the corner is still sharp. Next, let's talk about convex and concave angles. This angle on the left is convex, and this one is concave. Select the sharp edges, reduce the sharpness value to select the sharp edges that were not selected, add a bevel, and set the mitre outer to arc. And as you can see, the corners are different. The convex one is ok, it doesn't need to be fixed, but the concave one does. There are two ways to do that. The first one is to make two triangles and to add an edge at the center to make two diamond polygons. And the second one is to add two cuts like so and to remove the edge at the center to make one diamond polygon. But it has to be one edge behind the bevel to protect it. The next mistake is to scale your meshes in object mode. Press N to open the transform panel. And while being in object mode, let's scale on one axis. As you can see, the transform value of the X axis is 4.7. If I add a bevel, 
you can see that it is not uniform. The side on the x-axis is 4.7 times longer than the side of the y-axis. If I put the value back to 1, the bevel becomes uniform again. To fix that, remove the bevel, go back to object mode, press Ctrl A, then apply the scale. The transform values are back to 1 on every axis, and if you add another bevel, it is uniform. For the next mistakes, someone sent me this screenshot on Discord. I can see many errors that I'm going to talk about. The first one is over here. The bevel seems to have 4 edges. That's good, but here on the flat surface, there are too many edges and they make the polygon density non-uniform. So this is what he did. He selected all the sharp edges and even the edges on the flat surface and he added a bevel. Instead, you should do this. Select the sharp edges but the one on the flat surface. Add your bevel with a shape of one and that way you don't have some extra polygons that are not needed. Let's talk about the second problem. On this screenshot, take a look at what happens over here. There are a huge amount of very close edges everywhere. I'm going to show you how he did that and why you should avoid to do that. He obviously added some loop cuts manually like so with Ctrl R to keep the corners sharp and he applied two levels of subdivision. I asked him and he told me that it was what he did. As you can see, if we compare the two models side by side, we have the same very close edges and a non-uniform geometry. I don't recommend to do that because it can produce some pinching on curved surfaces and the geometry becomes very hard to adjust if you need to add some details later. Instead, you should do this. Add some loop cuts to make squared polygons. Select the sharp edges, add a bevel and set the mitre outer to arc and connect the vertices with J. That way, when you add more subdivision, the geometry is uniform, the polygons have the same size, and it's very easy to add more details. Next, we have this mistake. I see it a lot on Discord. Let's say that I want to add a bevel on this edge loop. As you can see, the flow of the bevel is broken. It can be fixed very easily by displaying the normal colors. If the normals are red, they are inverted. You just have to press Shift N to fix the problem. Next, we have a model sent by one of my Patreon subscribers. This model has a lot of problems and I will show you how to solve them. First, let's make sure that the normals are not inverted. Some of them are red. I'm going to flip them with Shift N. Now pay attention to the blade. The blue color of the normals is darker. It means that there are some duplicated overlapping faces. First, I'm going to make sure that I don't have any duplicated vertices. Select all the vertices, press M, merge by distance. As you can see, I just removed 190 vertices. Let's separate all the different parts by selection. Shift H to isolate the blade. If we zoom in, we can see the duplicated faces. Let's remove them. There are also some floating vertices. Select them, press M, merge at center. Do it again to the other side. If you see some artifacts in the viewport, it's because of the duplicated faces. Artifacts are also a good way to see them without displaying the normal colors. Select the duplicated faces, X, delete faces. I can only add some edge loops on one side of the blade, it means that we have another problem. If I try to move the vertices, I can notice that there is a floating vertex. Merge the vertices by distance, and if the distance value isn't enough, increase it a little bit. The problem is fixed. Alt H to exit the isolate mode. Let's select the handle. There is a face that we can delete at the bottom. This polygon is useless because it's not visible and it will take some space for nothing in the UV space. Let's select the handguard. The topology is not optimal, but let's ignore that. It's just a huge handgun. And if I delete the bottom faces, we can see that there are a lot of duplicated faces inside. Let's remove them. The model has been cleaned up. You can keep adding more details without any problems. Next, we have another model sent on Discord. The topology is really messy and not uniform. There are also some floating vertices and edges. I'm going to show you how to improve it, but honestly, it would be better to model it again from scratch. So there are way too many edge loops. 
they are also very close to each other and they destroy the curvature of that rounded detail. We can see that he also tried to add a boolean and to clean up the topology, but he failed. Let's delete the modifiers. Merge the vertices by distance. I just remove 170 vertices. For a faster selection, I'm going to add some seams. Press L to select the UV island. P to separate by selection. Let's delete that rounded part too. And I'm going to show you why you can't add a subdivision surface modifier on a mesh like that, with a non-uniform topology. Let's open the UV editor panel and unwrap the UVs. Go to the shading tab and load a checker map texture, increase the scale a little bit and add a subdivision surface modifier. Now pay attention to this area. There are a lot of edges and I don't see any texture stretching. Now look at this area where the polygons are larger. There is a lot of surface tension and more surface tension means more texture stretching. To fix the problem and to get rid of the stretching, add more loop cuts. The stretching is gone. Now look at this vertical edge loop at the center. If I add a subdivision surface modifier, we can see that the edge is not straight. It means that there is a problem. If I take a look inside the model, we can see a floating edge. Let's get rid of it. Let's remove that rounded part. We can see more floating edges. Now let's remove the unnecessary edges. Select these edges. Open the select menu, select loops, edge loops, and remove them. Let's do the same to each side of the hole. Add some loop cuts. Add a grid fill. Select these faces, I to inset, right click, loop tools, circle. Change the pivot orientation to normals. Scale on the y-axis. Extrude and the rounded detail is back. Now let's make the topology more uniform. Select these edges. Right click, loop tools, space. And add more loops with Ctrl R. You can also do the same on top. The topology looks way better than before and you can add more details very easily. That's it for today's video. In the next episode I will talk more about pinching, how to avoid it and how to add complex details on curved surfaces. Please like, comment and share this video with your friends if it was helpful. Thank you for watching, take care.